Imagine you're trapped with several people in a locked room. No one give you food, so you gotta eat whatever grubs came by. No way to communicate with the outer world. Or maybe even worse, you don't even know the outer world exists because you were born right there. The caveat is, whenever there is a massive earthquake, even if it's thousands kilometers away, your room also shakes. Debris might fall, but still, you couldn't evacuate. That's basically how the devil's hole puffish live. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is Devil's Hole Popfish? The Devil's Hole Popfish is a small fish in the Familia Cyprinodontidae. Members of this family are usually called the Popfish because they are playful like puppies, especially during mating. Cyprinodon itself means carp tooth. Hence, members of its order are called the tooth carps, but they aren't actually related to carps. If you look at the scientific name, it might be obvious that Diabolis means something diabolical, a devil. But it's not because they are scary or anything like that. It's because they live in the devil's hole, and only there. What's the devil's hole? We're gonna talk about that later. As I've said before, the devil's hole pupfish is a small fish, only 3.4 centimeters maximum, but usually around 2.3 centimeters. The overall color is dark brown. Males usually have metallic bluish iridescence. Meanwhile, the larvae and females are more yellowish. What's quite distinctive of them is they don't have pelvic fins. Even so, another fish in the same genus, which is the Amargosa river pupfish, also shows the loss of pelvic fins in certain conditions. What might be interesting is, that certain condition is being reared at 32 degrees Celsius with restricted diet which basically is simulating the living condition of the devil's hole pupfish. If we take a look at the other genus in the same family, then we can also see that some of those fishes also don't have pelvic fins. So honestly, there's nothing really special about how they look. It's basically similar to other pupfishes. You need to count scales and rays to identify them from other pupfishes, which might be boring to most of you. But what's interesting about them is their life. Or should I say, their living condition. But before talking about that, let me talk about the Devil's Hole first. Devil's Hole is a geological landmark which is part of the Death Valley National Park, Nevada. It's basically a pool within a limestone cavern in the middle of the desert. The water is relatively hot, around 33 degrees Celsius, with low oxygen concentration. The pool itself is quite deep, reaching over 130 meters depth, with some branching areas too. Even so, the bottom of this pool has not been mapped yet. One of the unique things about this pool is when there is a massive earthquake in the ring of fire, the devil's hole also experiences seismic activity. Imagine how wide that is. Oh, an earthquake in Indonesia, in Japan, in Chile? Yep, you got to experience that too. What a privilege. Anyway, now that you know the condition, let's get back to the fish. Even though the pool itself is quite big, the devil's hole pupfishes only live near the surface, usually above the depths of 15 meters. By the way, this is how the surface looks like. It's quite small, isn't it? Just so you could get the scale, this is a photograph of researchers conducting research there. We don't really know for sure since when were the fishes isolated here. Some research say they arrived here 20,000 years ago, while others say that it's recent under 1,000 years ago. We also aren't sure where they specifically came from and how, but it's most likely from a population of Cyprinodon nevadensis from the nearby rivers or springs. By the way, remember when I said that the dissolved oxygen in the devil's hole is low? The devil's hole puffies exhibit a behavior called paradoxical anaerobism. To put it simply, they don't consume much oxygen. They are observed to not consume oxygen for more than 2 hours even. You might think to yourself, how can this small pool host the entire population of the species? Well, it's because their population is relatively small, usually never go above 400 individuals, and it's not even stable. There are two major factors affecting this. The first one is food, which is quite obvious. They actually eat a wide variety of food, mostly algae, diatoms, and inorganic matters. 
They also eat small invertebrates. The problem is not the variety, but the amount. It's scarce, so the carrying capacity is not high, which is why a large population won't be sustainable naturally. The second is water level, which is also quite obvious since they cannot live without water. Last century, the population hovered around 400 to 600. In 1972, the water level plummeted because of water pumping from corporations. The fish population also plummeted to around 100. The US government then began to limit the pumping, and so the water level and fish population steadily raised again. That is, until 1995, where the population then continues to decline. We don't have a conclusive answer to why, but there are several hypotheses for this, such as food scarcity or changes in the algae and invertebrates community. It might even be low genetic variation and mutational meltdown, or it might even be the increase in water temperature and decrease of dissolved oxygen, or, you know, maybe combinations of those. They actually keep declining and reach all-time low in 2013, where only 35 or 38 individuals exist. Depends on the source. But the population is recovering now. How? Surprisingly, probably because of earthquakes. So, I've said the word says before, right? The one that happened in the Devil's Hole when there is a massive earthquake in the Ring of Fire? If you couldn't imagine how it's like, we're looking at it now. You might have noticed how scary and destructive it can be. Adult fish can swim deeper and avoid the damage, but young fish and eggs might perish during the says. But, there is one important thing that it brought. It's water. And not just simply water, but water that may contain more algae and diadems, which means more food. And after these says activities, the fish just suddenly started mating. We are not really sure why. Some hypothesize that the abundance of food and water trigger this behavior. It's like a reset button for their life if you think about it. For the past decade, several earthquakes happened and some of those were noted to positively affect the fish population, like the 2018 Gulf of Alaska earthquake, the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake, and the 2022 Mexico earthquake. In 2024, the population reached 191 individuals this spring, so the trend is rising since 2013, which is good news. At this point, it's quite obvious. But yes, the Devil's Hole pupfish is indeed endangered critically endangered to be precise. The main threat is their small habitat, which don't have much carrying capacity and not even stable. This isolation also makes their inbreeding coefficient really high, which is bad for their adaptability. I already talked about their living condition before, so I won't repeat what I said. There are also other threats for their survival. The first is this beetle. This is a diving beetle, and it's a predator. They usually eat eggs and small fishes. They naturally occur in the devil's hole, which is why zoologists couldn't just remove them from the pool because it might affect the balance. The second is human. Before I talk about that, let me talk about the conservation and the controversies surrounding it. The devil's hole puffies had been protected by the US government since the last century. It is one of the first animals to be protected under the Endangered Species Preservation Act of 1966, along with the American alligator and the Californian condor which might be more popular. They erected fences around the hole to protect the habitat. When they identified that the water level was decreasing because of water pumping, they brought it to the court and successfully stopped it. They also built several facilities for ex situ conservation. Unfortunately, most are not successful. But still, we learn a lot of things about the fish from research done in those facilities. At some point, scientists even consider giving food directly to the fishes. But it's debatable whether it's a good thing or not, since the goal is so that the fish can survive naturally. Alright, so, I'm not American and never been there. I don't really know the culture there, except for what I could see on the internet and depicted on media. Maybe this is not a shocking fact to most of you watching this, but this conservation effort led to several controversies. The biggest controversy happened around the 1970s case. So, the pumping was mostly done by the Kapert family, I think? I don't know who they are, I don't know whether that name means anything, 
or it's just a random family name? I don't even know how to pronounce that name, so tell me if it's actually a big shot over there. Anyway, they apparently invested at least $7 million into opening a ranch there. But as you have heard, they lose the case. And so, a propaganda was spread, saying the government prioritized fish over their people. This case divided the people into two groups those who support the conservation, and those who oppose. Well, maybe three. The third being those who didn't care. Anyway, some threats were made, stating that they would pour pesticide into the devil's hole to kill the fishes. Some bumper stickers that say kill the pupfish were even made to oppose the conservation effort. It's kinda baffling to me how such animosity towards the fish even arose and persists for some time. Another incident happened in 2016 where three drunk young men shot the gate and the surveillance camera, broke into the devil's hole, vomited, and took a bath there. That incident did not go well for the men, and for the fishes of course. After that incident, they put up barbed wires and extra cameras there. And that's about it. Sometimes what's interesting is not the animal itself, but the conditions surrounding them. Will the population continue to be stable for years? Will there be any more controversies surrounding them? Another incident maybe? Who knows? At the very least, there are still some people who support them. Some researchers that dedicate their life to the research for these fishes. For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.